What the world looked like two and a half billion years ago is not a question that most people wake up in the morning asking themselves. But it is a question that the rocks of far north Ontario can answer, or at least the geologists who've studied those rocks can answer. We've talked to two geologists, Greg Start from the Ontario Geological Survey and John Percival, who's with the Canadian Geological Survey in Ottawa. They've each spent many summers leading field crews who've walked over the rocks of the far north looked at them carefully, written lots of notes and mapped them, and slowly put together the story that they tell. They've looked at rocks like these, lava that erupted underwater and froze into rounded shapes like pillows, volcanic ash and frozen blocks of lava thrown out by volcanoes, sands and muds from underwater avalanches and slides, and layers that were almost melted in the roots of mountain belts. There are many stories about the way that the Earth came to be like it is today, and many of those are First Nation stories, and they're absolutely wonderful to listen to. We've chosen to tell the story that we know, that scientists have put together, but we're telling it for the young people of the far north and for their communities, the people who walk over the land, who travel on the land, and who know it so well. And of course, we're also telling it for those people who do wake up in the morning wondering what the Earth was like two and a half billion years ago. Hey, look at this. What are all these silvery bits? Mine's just black. Doesn't have any of that stuff in it. Hey, mine's all pink and white bits. Why are they all so different? Why are those pebbles so different? It all depends on how they were made. I'll try to explain. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago, it looked very different around here. No animals, no plants, no people. Just a few rocky islands in a huge sea that covered the whole Earth. The moon was much closer and the Earth was spinning so fast that a day was only 10 hours long. Chunks of rock and ice from space crashed to Earth every day, blasting out craters. Some of them were enormous, but some were as small as bathtubs. The islands were scattered all around the world, poking up from the rocky ocean floor like nuts in a chocolate bar. Many of the islands were volcanoes, blowing ash into the air like volcanoes do today. And lava flowed from some of them into the water, hissing and steaming like hot toothpaste from a tube. Down on the seafloor today, lava oozes along in hot pillows. Out in the bush, there's rock made of lava that froze into pillows on the seafloor hundreds of millions of years ago. The lava actually burst up through the rocky ocean floor from inside the earth, where it was hot enough for rock to become very soft and even almost melt. It flowed around like a hot, thick soup in a cooking pot, breaking the ocean floor and pushing the islands around from place to place. Ashkanaga and Webakwe and Nibbanamak and Deer Lake are on the rock that made one of those islands. Geologists call it caribou. And just a little way from Caribou were four other islands. One is called Hudson Island, and Fort Seven and Tawanek are on that one. Another is called Winnipeg River. A third one is called Marmion. And finally, there's one called Minnesota River. As these islands slipped and slid and were pushed around by the hot rock underneath them, they collided with Caribou, just like cars on an icy parking lot. Hudson Island slid into Caribou, squeezing seafloor rock between the islands and pushing some rock right underneath Caribou that melted and fed new volcanoes on the edge of the island. Molten ring of fire rocks rich in chromium and copper and nickel, cool and solidified in the roots of those volcanoes. On the other side of Caribou, Winnipeg River Island collided with Marmion 
and then together they collided with caribou, causing more volcanoes to erupt, right where Yabmatong is today. All these collisions pushed down the bottom of caribou. It began to melt and feed volcanoes in the middle of the island. Then, to finish it all off, along came Minnesota River Island, causing more volcanoes to erupt and squeezing more ocean floor rock into what was sticking together to become the far north of today. But one more important thing had to happen. Over hundreds and hundreds and more hundreds of millions of years, rivers and rain and the waves of seas that flooded the land wore down the volcanoes and hills to what we see today. And that's what made the pebbles. Why don't you look around and see if you can find some that looked like they're made of volcanic ash, others that were made of lava, and perhaps some that are still just sand. Have a look, see what you can find. Thank you.